everybody, Linda aka The Gamer Girl here, and today we're going to do a response video to Running Retro. Basically what he's doing is, for 24 days straight, he's going to talk about a video game that was significant, whether it was he played on stream and beat it, or he played when he was a child. But I'm liking this premise, and basically what it is is he's playing games that he barely touched, kind of like what I did was I went through my backlog, and the significance of it and how great the games are or what he didn't like about them. So I'm going to start with remakes, basically. I'm going to go through two genres slash games that I really enjoyed playing, revisiting back from when I was a child. And let's dive right in. So the first one is going to be Crash Bandicoot. So for those who don't know, Crash, the first game, was released on PS1 and has been on almost every single PlayStation slash any console you can think of and has been ported so many times to, you know, handhelds and things like that. But pretty much, basically, the reason why I'm talking about it is because it brought back a lot of memories. So the remaster is not perfect. It's got some kinks if you play it. And you're used to this style of playing, be prepared. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be how they did in number three worked, which is the jumping mechanics are way different. And the reason why they were different and warped was because you mostly drove, you know, on a motorcycle. You had, you know, running levels, a lot of different mechanics, and that's why it worked for three, but it doesn't work for platforming in one. So if you're going to play this, be prepared different jumping mechanics, different scenarios, and not for everybody. Not everybody liked it, but I liked it. I liked going back and challenging myself and trying to figure out the hitboxes and what was different, and oh boy, Ice Bridge kicked my ass. That's all I gotta say about that, but I liked it because when I played it, it reminded me of my childhood. It reminded me of getting my couple hours of the TV time to play a video game, getting frustrated, and I'm being honest. The first Crash Bandicoot, when I got it when I was younger, I didn't play and beat it all the way through. It wasn't until I got to maybe about PS2 age era when I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take the challenge and I didn't get every gem, I didn't do everything like that, but I did go and beat the whole the levels. It was a really chaotic time for me. I remember just throwing my PS2 into a smaller TV and just being in the room and just for hours playing and beating it and just got frustrated. Same thing with this one. There is some frustrating parts, you know, so I liked it. I liked going through the memories of remembering you know, the first commercial, seeing Crash talk crap to Nintendo, and being the mascot. I do miss Crash being the mascot. It is one of those things where, well, do I really want to dive into 4? Yes, I do, but I don't want to pay 60 bucks to find out if I don't like it. So I'm waiting for it to drop in price. Once it drops in price, I will definitely make sure that I pick it up and play it. So we'll see what happens with that one. See if the jumping mechanics the same. I've heard great things about Crash 4, but we'll find out. Now, on to the next genre slash video game is Tony Hawk. Now, same thing with Tony Hawk. It's not perfect on the remaster. There is some gravity mechanics that are not, you know, in the original game. When I got this game for the first time, I, again, did not beat it all the way through. I was one of those people that played a bunch of it, got through it, you know, when I got bored with it, I switched on to the next game, which I had about four or five games and that was it. Us young games, when we don't have a lot of money, we would just go through. I had, I had a lot of fighting games. I had Tekken, so that kept me past my time. But for that, I am grateful that I finally did beat it eventually. And now I just know where all the hidden stuff is. I can go through it and my my favorite one is 2. Um, a lot of people are into 3, but I, I really enjoy 2. I like 2. I like the, the levels that um, you, you don't know what to do with them. You just like downward jam and stuff like that. You know, I, I liked 1 and 2. They're my favorite. They were one of the things, just like Crash, when I saw the commercial come on the first time, I was like, oh snap. And I don't even skateboard. I didn't even skateboard at the time. I was like, I need this game. Just for the soundtrack alone. I literally just left it on <laughs> and played 
all the songs that I couldn't get because, hey, when you're young, you can't get R-rated stuff or M-rated or anything like that. So that's how I got my games <laughs> to get my CDs and soundtracks and stuff like that. But same thing with this. It was a little frustrating at first. The mechanics are weird and different. Not like Tony Hawk 5 bad, but just really different. You have to definitely collect the stats. It's not like how the first two games where you could just like blaze over. I, when I first played it and I streamed it, I was shocked that I could not make it over the little, you know, like humps and stuff like that. And I was just like, wow, I am really falling to the ground. The gravity is just taking me and pulling me down. But once I talked to a couple people, they're like, yeah, you just need to get the stats. And I'm not lying. When I finally got the stats, I enjoyed the game. I finally could play it the way it was meant to play. I went through, I beat every single level, and I was happy again. I remember all the good times of trying to figure out where all the secret tapes were, trying to look around, and I definitely played this again right after, just like I did for Crash. And man... Did I bring back some memories of me playing with my brother and playing with some friends and just all of us sitting around, you know, one bed crammed together trying to figure out how to get through all the levels. You know, it was good times and hopefully we get more video games and we can now scratch Tony Hawk 5 off the list as the last PS4 game. Thank God. So that was my response to Redney Retro. If you like to make a response, just tag him and let him know that you made a video about the series. It's really cool. I will definitely put the links in the description so you can check out a couple of videos and see what he was talking about. They are good videos. They're short and sweet to the point. You're not going to get one of those long ass videos where somebody takes the time to like ramble on. He's talking. It's a good time. And I can't wait for the rest of them. So. Thank you for watching. If you're new, please subscribe. And as always, keep on gaming the feels, the nostalgia. <laughs> Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games too.